In this video, I am going to explain how we can create our SDA fabric in Cisco DNA Center. Actually, fabric creation in Cisco DNA Center is a very simple process and initially requires only three parameters. Step one, fabric name. Step two, fabric location. And step three, selection of which virtual networks or VNs to make part of the uh, fabric. About the fabric location, you need to give careful consideration to overall fabric design and the selection of the fabric location. As these decisions determine the scope and size of the Cisco SD access fabric and which devices are available for it based on the device location chosen during provisioning. In general, okay, a building would be one fabric, one SDA fabric, which would include all building access suites, endpoints, users, and wireless access points. However, a campus with higher speed connectivity between buildings could also be defined as a single fabric depending on the scale, device, user counts, and building survivability requirement. Also, uh, for example, you can say a university with six or more buildings and higher speed links between each building could be defined as a single fabric as long as the number of devices is within the supported scale. However, if some of the buildings have dedicated external high speed links to a, for example, data center or to the internet that must remain available during an outage, then those buildings should be defined as separate fabric location. This consideration is necessary because fabric node roles such as control plane and border are shared within a single fabric and, no, and are re, uh, required for proper operation of the fabric. If connectivity is lost to any of these devices, the fabric operation degrades. In this example, a better alternative would be to define each building as a fabric site and then provide end-to-end -end fabric connectivity between them using the Cisco software defined access for distributed campus uh, actually feature that you will learn about in, in uh, future. Actually, you need to design carefully your fabric. Let me to show you how we can create our fabric. Three step process. Step one, fabric name. Step two, fabric location. And step three, selection of VNs. First, we need to log into Cisco DNA Center again. And after that, we need to go uh, to the provision menu. Okay, let me uh, to show you. You know that until now we have learned about other menus of Cisco DNA Center and also include the actually provision menu here. Look at here, provision. And then when you click here, you can see that we have network devices, ST access services. Now we are working, we want to work with fabric sites, ST access fabric site. Click on fabric sites. And now I'm going to show you how we can create our fabric. Let's begin by adding your first fabric site. Also inside of a fabric site, we can create fabric zones and we can use fabric zones uh, for some specific features. Here, I'm not going to explain about the fabric zones and configuration of them, only I'm going to configure fabric site, okay? Create fabric site, that's it. And as you can see here, we have informational message, create and configure SD access fabric sites and fabric zones. Fabric zones are optional and reside within fabric site. Yes, it's okay, let's do it. And after that, in the next step, fabric site location, it is very important. A fabric site begins at the selected level of hierarchy. All levels below the selected level are included as part of the fabric site. It means if you click United States, means all the United States sites and below childs will be in one fabric site. Okay, because of that, you need to select the correct actually site in the site hierarchy. Again, as you understand, the site hierarchy is so important. Here, for example, I'm going to 
configure the San Jose building SJC04 as one fabric site. Or maybe you want to configure one floor, but one building is good. San Jose, San Jose 04 is our fabric site. And keep in mind again that the site should be selected appropriately so that network settings such as IP pools from that site can be used. Okay, if the fabric site is at a level higher than the site where configuration parameters like IP pools have been allocated, they will not be usable. Okay, because of that, the SJC04, for example, and then we can click on the next. And after that, here, you know that we didn't configure a wireless users because of that, this is for wired endpoint data collection. Okay, we let me to read it. The primary function of this feature is to track the presence, location, and movement of wired endpoint in the network. Okay, and as you can see, it is enabled by default. And let me to uh, say, let me to keep it. And as you can see, traffic received from endpoint is used to extract and store their identity information, means EID, include MAC address and IP address. Other features such as IEEE 8.0.1x, web authentication, and Cisco actually security groups, formerly TrustSec, SD access, and assurance, and uh, depend on this identity information to operate properly. Wired endpoint data collection, this is the name of this feature, enables device tracking policies on devices assigned to the access role in the inventory. It's okay. And after that, here, let me to click on next. Also, don't forget, if you want to back to the previous step, you can click on back. If you want to review the configuration until now, you can see them. Fabric site location, SJC04. Wired endpoint data collection is enabled, yes. Okay. And because of that, let me to click on next. And in the next page, we uh, need to actually choose the authentication template. In most cases, we use closed authentication, but it is possible you, you use open authentication, low impact and uh, known. Select a template for the fabric site. The template will apply a port-based network access control configuration to all access ports on edge nodes and extended nodes. It's okay. Let me to click on closed authentication and after that next. Here, as you know, we can define fabric zone now or later. As, and as I mentioned before, I'm not going to configure fabric zones now because of that. Set up fabric zones later, uh, selected. And you know that fabric zones are optional. They reside within a fabric site and can only contain edge nodes and extended nodes. If fabric site are you fabric zones actually are used, only select virtual uh, networks and any cast gateway means IP address pools are provisioned to the edge nodes in the e in each fabric zone. Okay, if fabric zones are not used, all virtual networks and any cast gateways are provisioned to all edge nodes in the fabric site. It's okay. And because of that, let me to click on next. And here now we have these options, fabric site location and wired endpoint data collection, authentication template and fabric zones. Okay, and you can click on deploy. And uh, as you can see, uh, provisions in a uh, provisioning in uh, progress. We expect the provisioning pro uh, progress to take from two to five minutes. And your fabric site in global you, in this hierarchy was created successfully. Okay, we need to wait some second. As you can see, now the task is completed, and here uh, it is successfully created. We can go to the fabric site and see this fabric site, create fabric site and fabric zone successfully. It's okay. Again, we can go to the provision and after that, the fabric sites. Now here, let me do it. Okay, look at here. We have a fabric site. Also, if you want, you can create the next fabric site and also fabric zones here. And also you can here, we have two actions. Okay, first the first action is edit this fabric zone and also the, you can, uh, for example, delete it. 